of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us pray together.
Good morning and welcome to our online worship service this first Sunday of Advent. I'm Pastor Sarah Garrett Cray of Salem Lutheran Church on behalf of my colleague at Salem, Pastor David Asendorf, and uh, my spouse and colleague, Pastor Micah Cray from Faith Lutheran in Cockeysville. We warmly welcome you to worship this day. If you're visiting with us, feel free to say hello in the comments. We'd love to welcome you personally. A few announcements for the Salem congregation. Uh, we want to let you know that we have received uh, most of your ballots back for the live stream proposal, and the live stream motion has passed, which means we will enter into a contract with uh, with this company that will come and install uh, all of the equipment that we need to live stream our services from the sanctuary in the future versus pre-recording them. So we are very, very grateful for your participation in that vote. And by now, you probably will have received another ballot in the mail uh, to vote on the 2021 budget. So please return those. We're so grateful for your participation um, and that we are still able to conduct church business uh, uh, in this time of distance. A reminder that Wednesday, December 2nd, this Wednesday, we will have our online communion service over Zoom at 7 p.m. That link is emailed out in our weekly email, but if you're a visitor and you would like to attend that service, um, please just let us know in the comments. We can uh, get that link emailed out to you. Uh, virtual communion on December 2nd at 7 p.m., followed by our regular fellowship hour at 7.30. Uh, typically, if we were all worshiping in person, you would see our uh, angel tree in the narthex to support uh, the children's home in Catonsville with Christmas gifts. Um, we will still be supporting the children's home and we will still be providing Christmas gifts, but that's going to happen in an online format. Um, so keep an eye on your email and uh, Sue Dobin is going to send us a message as she is organizing that and let us know how we can participate that participate in that in these uh, socially distant times. A reminder that our Christmas hunger appeal continues. If you would like to write a check and send that to the church or if you would like to donate online, a reminder that that hunger appeal supports um, feeding ministries from the local to the global level. So Catonsville Emergency Assistance, the Maryland Food Bank, uh, ELCA World Hunger Appeal, and Lutheran World Relief. So please do give as you are able. Last year, I believe we raised $12,000 for that effort, and we are hoping to do just as well this year. So we thank you for your generosity. Again, welcome to worship, and now I'll invite Pastor Micah Cray. Good morning, I am Pastor Micah Cray from Faith Lutheran Church in Cockeysville. Just a few announcements for the faith community. We are in the last couple of days of collecting uh, for our effort to support our two sponsored families with Sarah's Hope. We are collecting about $1,300 to purchase presents for two families uh, that, are, uh, ha that have 12 people in them. Uh, and we are collecting uh, money to purchase presents for those families with Sarah's Hope. And so if you are able to support us in that effort, you can uh, submit your donations online uh, uh, through our website or by mailing a check into Faith's building. Uh, we would greatly appreciate uh, your donations and contributions to our, towards that effort. We also still have poinsettias available uh, to uh, sponsor in memory or in honor of loved ones for this Christmas season. Those poinsettias will be delivered to the church uh, just before uh, Christmas Eve, and we will be scheduling dates for people to come and collect those poinsettias. Uh, so if you would like to purchase those, we are asking for donations of about $10 uh, or anything that you can contribute towards towards that. Uh, but please uh, get those order in orders in by December 15th. Finally, we are collecting Christmas videos for our Christmas Eve service. Uh, this will be displayed during the time of the peace during our Christmas Eve service uh, that we would love to be able to see and hear from each and every one of you in our faith community so that we can see your wonderful faces. Uh, if you need help creating those videos, you can reach out to myself or Sid Meyer uh, so that we can help you create those videos, and then we will uh, take care of getting them inserted into the service. Uh, so please have those videos submitted to us or reach out to us before December 13th so that we can record those videos with you. 
As a note, uh, Faith and Salem will have separate Christmas Eve services this coming, uh, this coming Christmas Eve. Uh, it will still have our joint virtual choir and will still be wonderful in terms of our joint effort in music, uh, but we are uh, having separate services so that uh, both Salem and Faith can hear from our members in terms of the readings, in terms of the sermons, uh, and it should just be a wonderful day for both communities. Uh, but we still will have amazing joint efforts that you will see throughout those services. We are so grateful that you are with us for this Advent season. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. astray. We, we have, have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing our gathering hymn. Prepare ye the way of the Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with you, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eyes have seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities like the wind take us away. There was no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have delivered us into the hand of our inequity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 80, 1 to 7, and 17 to 19 responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so, will we never turn away from you? Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, 
and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. My name is Marley Toscano from Salem, and this Sunday, our gospel comes from Mark 13. Now in Mark 13, verse 35, Jesus said, Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. And this statement is true. In general, there's a lot that we don't know. Our life is unknown, our path is unknown, and right now we're living in a lot of unknown. We're living in a time that is quite hard to process and can become quite sad. Now, I find this gospel lesson as being both a beacon of hope as well as a reminder of truth. We were reminded that he will come again. We are told to stay awake, and in this sense, we should remain aware, aware of what we are living and waiting for, rather that be living to spread the word of God or living to find the truth. We also know that we must find love and hope in ourselves too. So let this be your Sunday reminder to rest and to love yourself and others. Now pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful Thanksgiving that has just passed. And thank you for allowing family to stay together while they may be apart. And for this upcoming holiday season, for everyone to be able to do the best they can during this hard time. Amen. Here we are, church, the season of Advent. Can you feel it? Maybe not right now in the light of the morning, but perhaps closer to 4.30 p.m. today. You'll feel it. As the darkness settles in sooner and sooner each evening and the days become colder, This time of the year can be difficult for many of us, adjusting to shorter days and more hours of darkness. That, paired with the fact that we will spend several weeks in worship talking about the virtue of patience and waiting with hopeful expectation. Advent should probably be my least 
favorite season in the church year, considering that I battle both seasonal depression and ADHD, which means that darkness and waiting patiently are two of my very least favorite things in this world. And it would make sense that this Advent season in particular would be harder than all the ones before it as we've added a pandemic on top of everything with all the trimmings of social isolation, disrupted routines, and even more waiting. But this year, moving into the season of Advent feels like pulling on my favorite cozy sweater. I find myself sort of melting into this upcoming season with a sense of comfort and relief. And I think that's because I'm recognizing that I don't have to fake it through Advent. In Advent, with all its apocalyptic images and prophetic voices shouting their questions towards God, there is no need to pretend that all is right with the world. Because we hear over and over again in the scriptures that all is not right with the world. Which is precisely why we await our Messiah, the one who will make all things new. The season of Advent is about our expectation for the arrival of Jesus. Both the infant in the manger and the long-awaited return of he who was crucified and resurrected. The one who is with us now, our Emmanuel, and the Messiah who will set the end of time, the apocalyptic sequence, into motion. And this is why we hear texts like our gospel today. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And it's why we hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Oh God, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. It all sounds sort of scary and apocalyptic, right? Apocalypse meaning to uncover or reveal. It's where we get the name for the book of Revelation. Advent is a season of uncovering and revealing our desperate need and desire for God to come and be near to us. In Advent, we are not asked to put on our bravest faces and pretend like we can handle it all, but instead to be vulnerable and honest about the ways in which we need Christ in our midst to get through the days when it feels like the sun has been darkened and even the heavens are quaking. Advent, I believe, is a beautiful season of surrender. A time to admit that there is trouble and strife in the world that we cannot possibly face or fix alone. A time for us to acknowledge our desperate need for God with us, our Emmanuel. And perhaps for some of us, that feels frightening, as vulnerability so often does. Advent, with its increasing darkness, when the sun doesn't shine as often as if it's been darkened, like our gospel text says, the darkness of Advent and the raw vulnerability of our deep need can feel overwhelming. When I was young, I had a terrible time falling asleep at night. Bedtime in my household became a painful, multi-hour process of little Sarah trying to bargain her way out of sleeping in her own room. After the anxiety-ridden pre-bedtime routine of teeth brushing and pajamas and my feeble attempts to do everything to slow down the process, my parents would take me upstairs and tuck me in, leaving my bedroom door cracked and the hallway light on. But even with that sliver of light, it was still too dark for me. 
And I still felt so afraid, alone with my thoughts and worries and fears that felt so much bigger than I could handle. Almost every night, I would sneak down the stairs at least once or twice, hoping that my parents would have a change of heart and let me stay up to watch the 10 o'clock news with them, only to have them march me back upstairs to my room, where it felt too dark and where I felt too vulnerable. These days, at 30 years old, I relish my bedtime routine. It's not uncommon for me to look at Micah around 9 o'clock and say, you know, I think I'm ready for bed. Instead of dragging out the pre-bedtime rituals, I happily brush and floss my teeth, take my nightly vitamins, and choose the comfiest pajamas. I write in my journal, do some deep breathing or meditation, and drift to sleep pretty easily most nights. And in a twist that my younger self would be horrified by, I prefer for it to be dark, without a nightlight in sight. And in fact, sometimes I'm annoyed by even the little bit of light that comes from my alarm clock. Over time, I have come to appreciate the things that once scared me and filled me with dread, the darkness, and the vulnerability There's a verse from the 45th chapter of Isaiah that I love, and it goes like this. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. The treasures of darkness. So often we associate darkness with evil or danger or terror. Throughout Advent and Christmas, we hear scriptures like, The people who once walked in darkness have seen a great light. Or the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Painting the picture that to not know God is to be shrouded in darkness, but to know God is to be enveloped in light. Light is good and darkness is bad. And while that can be helpful imagery in a lot of ways, we can't forget that God is constantly in the business of flipping our binaries on their heads, casting down the mighty and uplifting the lowly, for example, forsaking power and might and instead showing strength through weakness and vulnerability. And yes, inviting us every now and then to turn out the lights and to consider the treasures of darkness. It was God's spirit hovering over the deep darkness after all that gave life and creation permission to spring forth out of nothing. It is within the dark, damp soil of the earth that next spring's seeds burst open and begin taking root. A seed whose flower and fruit will not break forth until it has had ample time in the darkness of the earth. It is within the darkness and safety of the womb that a child grows and life takes shape. And it was the darkness of the tomb that made a way for resurrection. Darkness is possibility in God's hands. Darkness is a space for creation, for growth, for healing, for restoration, and even resurrection. Consider the soothing relief of a dark room when you're in the midst of a terrible migraine. Consider the ways our bodies restore themselves in the dark of night as we rest. Consider the way we often close our eyes when we're trying to envision something. The darkness of our eyelids serving as a canvas for us to create. These are the treasures of darkness. And perhaps this is why the season of Advent feels comforting to me these days, because God has shown us that even in the midst of darkness, there is potential. 
Even and perhaps especially in the midst of darkness, there is hope. And hope is a daring thing for us to have these days, dear church. In a season when so many of us are crying out with the prophet Isaiah, Oh God, that you would just tear open the heavens and come down right now, setting everything that is wrong right. As we enter into this season of honesty and vulnerability, exposing our deep need for God's presence in our lives and in our world, as we wait in the darkness, we hold on to the hope that we will find in the manger on a dark night in Bethlehem. And we hold on to the hope we will find in the darkness of an empty tomb. That Jesus, our Emmanuel, will stop at nothing to draw near to us. In the prophet's lament and the apocalyptic imagery of our readings today, we are reminded of all the ways this world is broken and in pain and in need of healing. And in this season of Advent, this season of darkness and waiting, thank God that we don't have to pretend we can handle it all on our own or that we're not struggling just to make it through these days. Perhaps instead, all we need to do in this season of Advent is sit for a while in the darkness and hope fiercely. Trusting that God is with us and is working in this darkness too, creating, growing, healing, restoring, resurrecting. Jesus said, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. When the darkness of this Advent season feels like too much to bear, remember that Jesus calls us to consider the changing seasons. Never once have the seasons failed to change. Never once has the sun failed to rise after a dark night. And never once will Jesus, our Emmanuel, fail to be near to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Wake, O Wake, for Night is Flying.
Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. O oh God of creation, we pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Be with our bishops Elizabeth and Bill. Be with all deacons and pastors, administrators, staff, and lay leaders, as we strive to proclaim your word in this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. We pray especially for all of those caregivers and health care workers who are treating those with COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, during this pandemic, we pray for the over 100,000 people hospitalized with COVID-19 in our country and the thousands and thousands of sisters and brothers around the world who are also hospitalized. We pray for the homebound, those in rehab, the unemployed, those living with addiction, those in prison. We pray for the lonely, the heartbroken, and those who are grieving. We pray especially your blessing upon all the physicians and nurses, EMTs and PAs, physical therapists and technicians, all who provide loving and skilled care to the sick. Especially this day in the Salem community, we Pray healing for Marcy Schuett, Betty Durkin, Carl Kreps, Scott Graham, Paul Kravitz. We pray for Eveline Lister, sister of Jim Lister, who is in the hospital and near death. We pray for Penny Ray and Gary Giuliani on the death of Penny's sister Becky. We pray God's consolation and comfort for them. And for Joey Morgan's dad, Denny, and for Beth Massey's sister, Sue, we pray for continued strength in their fight against cancer. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today we also pray for Bob and Margaret, for John and Kathy, for Barbara, Albertina, Martha, Kim and Dinky, and also for Jordan and Taylor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Let's share God's peace. Peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. On behalf of the Salem and Faith congregations, we wish to thank you again for your continued generosity. A reminder that at Salem, we have our annual Christmas hunger appeal, and Faith is collecting donations for Sarah's Hope. Thank you. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. 
Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing, 
In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is soon and very soon.